Maybe you want to blur the edges of your photos like this, or maybe like this, or maybe just add a nice glowing effect to your highlights like this. Well, regardless of how you want to blur the edges of your photo, this tutorial is going to share exactly how to do it. So let's start things off by blurring the edges of our photo into the shape of a shape. Now for the first example, let's do the most basic option, which is creating a rectangle square or circle crop. And this is the easiest because you can use the rectangular or elliptical marquee tools here. Now I want to blur the edges of my photo in a circle circular crop, so I'm going to select the elliptical marquee tool here. Now in the upper settings bar, I'm going to make sure that this option is selected to create a new selection. Next we're going to go to the feather setting, and here is where you can control how blurred or how soft the edges of your selection will become. So the higher the number you type in here, the more of a feather you're going to have outside of your selection. So depending on how close you are to the edge of your image, like in this case I have the hard edge here which isn't too far from my subject. so I I probably won't use a super large feather. In this case, I'll do something like 50. So now with that set, we can go and create our selection. Clicking and dragging out, I'm using the elliptical marquee tool, so I'm gonna create a circular selection. I'll hold the shift key to create a perfect circle, but if you're using the rectangular marquee tool, holding the shift key will just create a uniform square for you. Now holding the space bar, I can reposition the whole selection at once, and I'm just gonna select my subject like so. So everything inside of the selection will remain visible, while everything outside of our selection will be left out. So with this selection active and my layer selected, I'll click on the layer mask icon to add that selection to a mask. And now I have technically cropped my layer, but you can notice how the outer edge is soft because of our feather setting that we used previously. So I'll grab my move tool here and I'll just scale this up. The reason that my entire image is selected is because it's a smart object and not a rasterized layer, but it doesn't really make a huge difference in this case. Just scaling it up so you get a better view of what's going on. And now you can see how we have a nice soft edge. And this right here is the 50 pixel feather that we chose previously. So if you did a smaller pixel now, it would be more of a harsh, sharp edge. If you did a larger feather, then you would have a much longer transition between where it's 100% visible and then 100% transparent. So whether you're using the rectangular marquee tool or the elliptical marquee tool like I just did here, the settings are gonna do the exact same thing. Now, the problem with this is that with the elliptical and rectangular marquee tool, yes, it's the easiest option, but it's limited because you can only create circles, rectangles, or squares. So what if you wanna create a more unique shape such as a triangle, for example? Well, that's where you can go and use the shape tools and use them as a path. Let me explain how that works. I'm going to just delete this layer mask so we can start fresh once again. And this time I'm gonna to go to my shape layer. So going down here, I'm gonna click and hold and select my triangle tool. This is a newer tool in Photoshop, so if you're using an older version, you might not see it. However, you might find it by clicking on the three dots right down here. And if it's available, it will appear below. Now with my triangle tool selected, I'm gonna go up to the top bar here and select path. By default, it's set to shape, but we wanna set it to path. So I'll click on path. And now I'll click and drag out, holding the shift key to create a uniform triangle and holding the space bar to reposition the whole thing at once. And I'm gonna center this right around my subject like so. Now with this path created, we're gonna go up to the upper settings bar and click on make selection. That's gonna reveal this little box right here where we can choose the feather radius just like we did with our rectangular or elliptical marquee tools. So I'll set this to 50 pixels once again and set this as a new selection and anti-alias checked off. Click OK, and that's gonna turn that path into a selection. Now with that selection active, we can click on our layer once again and then add a layer mask, and that's going to add that selection onto our mask and create those feathered edges for us and cropping our photo into a more unique shape. So this same thing applies to any shape that you're using, and so then that way you can get some more unique cropping effects while you're also blurring the edges of your images. Now, I will admit that this particular way of blurring the edges of your photo is pretty niche because not everybody wants to have a specific crop to their image with blurred edges. Most of the time you're wanting to add a blur to the edges of your photo to add some more like depth of field effects and things like that. That's where the Gaussian blur and smart filters come into play. Now here in my next example, it's the same image, but now on a different project, we can go and add a nice blur to the outer edges of this photo, maybe just to help bring our attention to the center of the photo a little bit more. Now to do that, we can basically create a blur layer. So first select your 
layer of choice that you want to add a blur to. And then we'll press Command or Control J to duplicate that layer. I'm gonna call this layer to blur. Now with that layer selected, we're gonna convert it to a smart object and you'll understand why in a moment. To do that, we'll right click and go to convert to smart object. You'll know that your layer is converted when you see this little smart object icon right here. Now let's go and add our blur by going to filter, blur, and Gaussian blur. In the Gaussian blur settings panel that appears, you can choose a radius and obviously the higher the radius, the more blurry your filter will be. So depending on how aggressive of a blur you want around the edges of your photo, you can decide that right now. In my situation here, I wanna do just a nice subtle blur so it blends into the image nicely. With that set, I'll click OK. And now we have our blur applied to everywhere on our photo. But looking at our layers panel, we now have a smart filter. And this smart filter layer mask right here, this white box, is what you can use to selectively add your blur to the edges of your photo. Now, currently the entire blur is visible. So we want to make everything transparent and then add things back selectively. So let's first hide our smart filters mask by clicking on it and pressing command or control and I to invert it, therefore making everything transparent. From there, we're gonna grab our brush tool by pressing B and make sure that our foreground color is set to white because in the world of layer masks, white means you are painting visibility. You're making things visible once again. Then up in the brush settings, I'm gonna select a soft round brush with my hardness set to 0%. Flow and opacity to 100% there. And now with that Smart Filters layer mask still selected, that's very important. We'll now go and just paint around the edge of the photo like this. And notice how wherever I paint, it becomes blurred. Let me zoom in here just to show you a bit of a better example. As I paint over, notice how anywhere that I paint becomes blurred out. And that's because we're making this Gaussian blur smart filter visible anywhere that we're painting. So this is a great way to add selective blur to the edges of your image. Now, if you want to remove any of this blur, you can switch your foreground color to black. And then now painting over that will remove any of the blur that you've added on because you're now making it transparent on this Smart Filters layer mask. Now the final thing that you can do is if you want to sort of vary how visible your adjustment is as you paint, you can change the opacity, which is therefore gonna change how strong the effect will be. So currently we have a 100% opacity brush, meaning our Gaussian blur is gonna be at full strength based on what we set it to previously. But let's say I wanted to have only half the strength visible. So then in that case, I can set my opacity to 50%. Now painting white onto my image, it's going to add a slightly less intense Gaussian blur because it's half as powerful as the original 100% visible blur. And looking at my layer mask here, you can see how there's that patch of gray indicating the 50% visible Gaussian blur in that specific area. So by adjusting your opacity, you can get some really customized blur effects on your image. Now, once you've gone around your whole image and you've added some cool blur effects like this, sometimes it can feel a little bit overwhelming, especially if you just want this blur to add maybe some glowy highlights. Well, in that case, there's a simple blending mode that you can use to to make your blur blend a little bit differently. With your blur layer selected, change the layer blending mode from normal down here to screen, and notice how it changes how all of my highlights look here. And it's a little bit too strong right now, so let's bring down the opacity of my blur layer. So clicking on the opacity option with that layer selected, I'll bring that down until the glow effects in my highlights feel a little bit more natural there. So turning that on and off, you can see how it really just brings to life those highlights here. And this is essentially what is called the Orton effect. And I talk about this more in depth in another video you can find up in the corner right now if you're interested. But this is an awesome technique to use for any photographer who's wanting to make the highlights in their images glow. And it looks awesome, especially in landscape photos. So now with these three techniques, you are gonna be a master of blurring the edges of your images here in Photoshop. Whether you wanna add a unique crop to your images or you just wanna add a Gaussian blur to the edges of your photo, now you know how to do it. So if you enjoyed today's tutorial, make sure to hit that like button down below and also consider subscribing to stay up to date with more tutorials just like today. Anyways, my name is Brandon from BeWillCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.